It's the middle of May, May 14th now, and uh, it's a nice day. The weather is uh, kind of normal for uh, this part of the world. So let's do a little walkabout and see what the garden is normally like on uh, May 14th. The past two years have been quite hot. If these onions and peels, I actually just hardened those off. I had the uh, cabbage out here, but uh, they're moved in right now. Doesn't look like this guy's going to uh, grow, I don't know. Crocus is there. Still flowering. These are, uh, I would like to know the name of them. I, I have the uh, Osage Orange put up into these two gallon pots that I did a video on making these pots. Uh, they haven't uh, showed any signs of coming back to life yet. Rose bush. Bloom starting on the lilacs. Leaves of the uh, snowball bush. Yes, this has been planted out with peas on the inside. You can see the perennial onions there that are growing. So we will have California poppy. This is one here. A couple of here. Flowers I don't remember the name of. I'm going to have to put a sign out when I get the name of them again. This is the evening primrose. There's one there. I guess I no, there's another one just straight here. I think Monday it's supposed to be uh, relatively dry, so I'd be able to sit along here and weed this out and put my snow peas on the inside. As you can see, more flowers from bulbs growing on the outside. Perennial onions growing bigger here. I'm starting to be able to uh, clip a uh, leaf here and there to get some green onion. This one is columbine. I thought I had a couple more here growing somewhere, but I don't. Of course, this is why you make sure you uh, pull up signs, eh? Because I was weeding over the other place and I come across one of them signs and I'm like oh yeah that's right like an echinacea plant out here there was only one over there um, but there's the one echinacea growing here and another one here grass is around because I haven't been here weeding out yet and another one here I go along here now this is the inside portion of the uh, middle portion of the fence excuse the shadow I got a oregano planted there I had meant to mark where the uh, wood soil was oh here it is so this is wood soil right here and another little bit right here. I'm letting that grow as a ground cover here during the uh, summer so when I weed out I can't dig in here and tear out all the roots because I'll be tearing out this. We wouldn't expect uh, 
grapes to start leaving out until 1st of June and then about the middle of June they'll have their leaves out. So we're looking along this portion of the fence now. So remember by this stick there was a lovage growing. And here it is right here. So that's starting. And also the uh, St. John's wort. Now I grew these from seed and uh, of course once I got them grown from seed and found out what the plant looks like I exploring around the area and they're growing wild everywhere around here. This tree is a red maple. You can see its leaves are just starting to come out. Romeo cherry, a couple of years ago, this uh, bush actually put out two flowers. So in any year at all, we, I could be getting uh, cherries off of this bush. I like uh, the smoke bush, just the color of it. This big uh, purple bush that grows here. Uh, I don't get flowers off it worth talking about, but uh, I do like the bush, so. It shall remain. For some reason, uh, Juliet Cherry has been uh, restricted. She's behind. They're both the same age, eh? Romeo and Juliet. The leaves are just starting, the buds are just starting to grow on the uh, common pear, is what they call it. I was just at uh, the local nursery and they had common pear there and I said well I'll buy two. Uh, whether it will ever produce fruit that's yet to be seen. Hey, you can see with the common maple it's more of a well like I say this is the common maple that grows around here and uh, it is way ahead of the red maple because the red maple is not really a native plant to here. This plant and the further bush up it's called Forsythia and uh, they come out loaded in flowers first and then their leaves will come out afterwards so they're not quite open actually uh, it's going to be well maybe sometime uh, this coming week uh, that'll be f the le flowers will be fully open and they'll be just covered in uh, yellow. Remember I've got the three St. John's wort here. St. John's wort is a anti-anxiety herb. So it's a nerve tonic which is why I have it of course but uh, like I said I couldn't find out I could get it anywhere if I knew what, I, what it looked like before I actually started growing it. And there's strawberries planted here, which were not growing well. And this is one of the weird beds that I'm working on to see what uh, does grow well and if I can amend it to get more to grow well. I'm on two mines. Um, I did mention that I was going to put peppers here, but I don't really have pepper plants growing that well so kind of thinking maybe tomato plants are going to be going here anyway that's uh we all shall decide so, so yeah here the uh, peony onions are growing even better you see this is what i was saying before I tried to make a sign and burn the uh, words onto it and of course the sh shape is there so you can still kind of see it but it fades out and uh, it will fade away pretty quickly. Myroblan cherry plum. 
the leaves are coming out on that, just starting. I'm expecting fruit like that to flower uh, any time at all, any year at all now. See, it looks like this is a high bush blueberry, you see, a Chippewa. And these are the low bush blueberries. These are just starting to come out. I didn't expect actually the leaves to be starting on these yet. We've got an oregano here and this is another Myra Bland cherry plum. Back off. They are growing really nice. This area is wet. I tried to get some high brush cranberry growing. I might have to buy plants. But that's one thing that likes uh, wet feet all the time. And apparently uh, currants don't mind wet feet either because this is a current bush and it grows perfect. And uh, if you've been following me you know all of this. The water seeps down here from the uh, spring box up there. And of course willow. This is a fox willow. I haven't got my wood picked up yet. So there's a birch leaf pear planted there. And another one planted there. That one I noticed a few days ago that it is leaving out. Halfway between those two is the Carolina allspice and the buds are just starting to swell on it now. What I'm thinking about doing here with these trees Get some sandy loam, or loamy sand, whichever you want to call it, out back and mix it half and half with coarse compost and pot them up in those two gallon planters that uh, I did a video on making. These are honey locusts. You don't really see it show signs of uh, growing yet. And then the buds are swelling on the red mulberry. This one with thorns, that's black locust. And uh, no sign of that starting yet. Or the, uh, oh, there is sign of kiwi starting. Look at this. Right there. So the kiwi is starting to grow down here. I don't know how it works, of course. It might just work its way up from the down low and each bud come out one after the other. We shall see soon, hey. Sunny plot. I don't have this bed done, the first one. Carrots are planted here. And carrots are planted here. I have Denver Zaflong, Scarlet Nantus, Little finger and Corliss toucan. This is the uh, mustard bed, and they're coming right along. It'll be, it won't be very long, and this will be full of mustard plants. These two beds, they are actually a lasagna no dig type bed that I plant uh, potatoes in every year so I won't be doing anything uh, with what's in them I'll just stick the potatoes down in what's there now strawberries in those two beds garlic is going wonderfully isn't it every one of them came up
And I think my onions are doing well. I worry about them every year because they lay over and... Uh... Oh yeah, I didn't have enough to quite finish this side. That's why there's a little empty spot there. And there's a lot of them just still standing. We go up that bed, it needs a layer of compost. And then we go over here. I'm going to raise this water fence this year again, of course. I put a layer of fresh compost on this one. So sugar beet is planted in there. I didn't put the layer of fresh compost on this one because I put that uh, compost soil on it uh, last year and it's uh, well amended. These two beds are technically ready to go, but as you can see, the soil is bare and out, so it's nice to add a layer of organic matter completely covering the soil, because if you don't, it dries out so fast. Coming up, um, but they're not overly thick, are they? I think they're supposed to be the size of a pencil at least. Now, here's the thick one coming up right here. <laughs> I might get one spear to uh, pry up. I see one here, uh, somewhere here, I've seen one just coming up, I can't remember where, but there's one over here. So, there's one, two, three, four we counted, but there should be two more plants. This is spinach. Remember, I sowed spinach here, so on both sides, spinach will be growing as well now. I'm working down through the uh, compost and I have some footage so I'll make a separate video of just the compost. But this is what I'm talking about mixing with the uh, sandy loam and uh, putting those trees in. This is what we call a shady spot. Now that those few trees there are gone, this is actually really bright. And uh, what I noticed, that the only bed that doesn't get sun is the one right in the back corner. Potatoes are going in that one, and I've grown potatoes well in it before, so I'm not worried about that. Speaking of potatoes, you see this bed, I've got the ashes spread over it. I brought out the ashes from the stove this morning. It's one of the traditional uh, fertilizers for potatoes around here is uh, stove ashes, uh, potash. That's good for your potatoes and we would spread the ashes from the stove over the potato ground and back in the times where we did the old-fashioned way of just having drills and drills of potatoes we would actually have a uh, bonfire in the uh, late fall after the potatoes were taken up, we'd have a bonfire on the potato ground. I got this uh, bed cleaned out and things are growing nicely. Chai's down there. I don't know, seems like the catnip is not doing that well. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Here's the other uh, love each. I know that's not going to be a big plant this year. This is a lot of green, but it's sheep laurel. And uh, that, it doesn't have very uh, deep root system at all, and it's a fine root. 
It's actually quite easy to get out. Once I sit down here beside it, it won't take me very long. The snow melted and we got cold weather and the time went like that. I expect it to all come back nice and green though. I'm going to give it a, a shear back here at some point soon. I did uh, harvest uh, these chives yesterday. The regular beets I have, I have cylinder planted here. This is bull's blood, both good beets. This is uh, one that I've trying out uh, this year. Uh, I've never had before. Oh, I got the sign here somewhere. See, this is why you put signs, right? I don't know if you can see that, C-H-I-O-G-G-I-A, however you pronounce that. That's the one with the rings in it, one white, one red. And in the back there is our traditional uh, Detroit dark red. So going back here, I'm going to have potatoes in these two beds as well. Uh, like I said, I was hardening off cabbage, and that's what's going here. I had this bed done. See, this is all Brussels sprouts. But I thought, I like frozen Brussels sprouts. And even if I had to blanch them, uh, I'm not going to get too many Brussels sprouts. I could eat a lot of Brussels sprouts, I think. So, Brussels sprouts out front. Uh, and then, in the middle is cauliflower. And in the back is broccoli. That one plant that doesn't look that great, it didn't look that great when I put them there. So, as far as the rest of them, they seem to do just fine. So I'm kind of really hoping that I'm going to get something good out of these this year. So there's going to be potatoes there, as I said, and potatoes here. This is the bed, uh, wait, I know. Not there. Potatoes there. This one I was going to put the uh, zucchini in. I have to go through it and sift it all out. You'll see on the uh, composting video what I mean by going through it and sifting it out. Because I have to get rid of that. And that one that uh, was on the Shed Wars bed, the rutabaga is in there. This is another area where I'm going to put squash. I just whacked on a whole bunch of kelp on it the last fall. And, uh, well, cardboard down and grass mulch and kelp on top. And I'm just going to whack the squash down through that. And we come across here, of course. We've got our uh, raspberries that are leaving out. Make sure you're standing up straight. I've got rhubarb over here under the tree just because I had extra rhubarb and it's one of those things, it's like, uh, I believe his name is Kevin, uh, Canadian Permaculture Legacy. So here's the apple tree, you see the buds are just swelling now, if that's in focus. Plant like a squirrel, he says. And that's what I intend to do. Do you see this little bush here? That's a sage bush. Uh, service berry, Saskatoon berry, goes by several names. I got good fruit off that last year. Just an handful, but hey, <laughs> since the rest of them gets infected with the uh, that rust fungus every year, I was happy to get a handful. And last but not least, 
we're outside. This is the uh, Siberian pea shrub and it's starting to grow. The leaves are almost opening up now. Well, it is looking beautiful and I'm going to edit this video tomorrow but if I can get it down short enough then I might show you the seedlings that I have inside. I'm starting excited again now. I was a little down there for a bit because the weather, uh, well, so switching back, like I said, it's a normal year, really. Uh, but we get used to stuff so fast, and I was backing up on my planting. <laughs> 